Thank you for joining me this evening. The discussion is John 1, 1 made easy. No Greek. No Greek required. We're going to make the discussion of John 1, 1 a no Greek required subject. Meaning, John 1, 1, I believe, and I intend to show this evening, can be effectively discussed using any translation in any language to resolve the question of what the Bible teaches, specifically in John, John 1, 1, and the rest of what John says, and refute things it doesn't, like the Trinity. This video is not a part of my official The Bible and the Trinity in Conflict series. We're going to do part 11 of that series tomorrow on Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Then we're going to go into John 1, 1 in part 12. And in that video, in about two weeks, I'm going to go through all of the technical issues related to the Greek and English grammar that relate to how this text is often discussed and translated. I've already done quite a bit of that in my writings in JWD, Jehovah's Witnesses Defended 1, 2, and 3, as well as in my several of my debates and in other writings. I've addressed all of the issues related to Caldwell's rule, Harner's article, the whole qualitative idea, and how Trinitarians use that idea to try to justify their understanding of this text. We'll talk about that next when we get to John 1, 1 in part 12 of my Bible and the Trinity in Conflict series. This video, other than maybe the occasional reference to a Greek term like theos, which I think most people know already, if you read the Bible at all or study it, means God or a God. Sometimes people translate it divine, but it most often mean most often in the singular means God or a God, theos. So that's not that's a term I might reference along with logos, word. But beyond that, I'm not going to get into any grammar. No syntax, no word placement. We don't need to, right? Because we have translations. We have translations of John 1.1 1, 1 by all of the people, more or less, right? The representatives of these different groups that tell us, this is how you translate this text. So what's their translation? What does it say? Does it prove what they believe or not? Or do we have to get into the Greek? Is it just impossible for us to come to a resolution of John 1.1 1, 1 if we don't raise the level of discussion to technical grammar one? I don't believe that is. I don't believe it's necessary for us to go beyond just reading this text in any translation and while there's disagreement about part of the translation, the part that's not disputed solves this equation. So you might be wondering, well, just how is that the case, Greg, right? Because we have all these different groups telling us it should be translated God, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In the Word was God. G O capital G O D. Sometimes you'll find a translation that says the word was divine. What does that mean? So if they tell us that this translation of capital G O D or divine is based on Greek grammar, how can we avoid discussing Greek grammar to address their arguments right? Think of another text where this subject comes up. There are a couple differences that I'll explain, but think of John 10. In fact, let's go to it right now. I'll go ahead and bring up in this case, the New World Translation. And in John 10, do we not have, in fact, what I'll do even more so than that, I'll bring up the Bible Hub. 
this is what we're going to look at when we get to John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Bible Hub, BibleHub.com, provides an easy way to get comparable listings of translations that we're going to use to review John 1.1 1, 1 in just a moment and show how any translation, any of these translations can be used to effectively discuss and conclude resolutely the meaning of John 1.1. But for a moment, let, let's explain first how we can come to the meaning of a term like theos. Right? Really the issue in John 1.1 1, 1 is that word, that Greek word that I said I might mention, that means God or a God. Right? It says the logos was theos says he was with Theos. It uses the article there, but I'm not going to get into it in this video because it's not relevant, not necessary. I will get into it in part 12, though. So he's with God, John 1.1. 1, 1. Well, we're going to review it in all these texts in a moment. And then it says he was Theos. Well, what, is it God? Divine? A God? Well, it can mean a God, right? So that's when... That's when people like Trinitarians try to say it's this grammar that requires this capital G-O-D or divine and can't be a God. We're not going to go there, though. Let's go here first before we go back to John 1, 1. John 10, because we have the same word, theos, again. In John 10, we've discussed this text extensively, right? Jesus talks about being the Son talks about him and the Father being one, how he showed many fine works from the Father, John 10, 32. And then in verse 33 of John 10, they accuse him of blasphemy, according to these translations, for being, claiming to be God, capital G-O-D. Pretty much every single one of these translations says that Jesus claimed or made himself God, capital G-O-D. In fact, every single one in this list states that. The term used is theos, just like in John 1.1 1, 1 about the word. And it can mean God or a God. Why do they all take it as God here and as God in John 1.1? 1, 1? Well, before we go to John 1.1 1, 1, to take a closer look at that, just in the English translations like we're doing for John 10, can we explain how this should be translated without any Greek at all? We can. Look at the very next text, John 10.34. Jesus is the one they're accusing of blasphemy, right? We just read it. And they say he claimed to be God. According to every one of those translations, these here, but in that text we just reviewed. Capital G-O-D. Then Jesus responds. Right? They're accusing him of something that these English translations say is capital G-O-D, God. Jesus responds and quotes a text that uses the term gods in the plural. For other sons of God who are spoken of in Psalm 82, by God, as gods. That's the text Jesus chose to use to defend himself against the accusation he was claiming to be they us. If that's translated God, capital G-O-D, how does Psalm 82 
and Jesus using it to show that even those against whom God came in judgment are called gods, and so therefore he as the Son of God whom he sent is properly called Theos. How does Psalm 82 respond to the accusation he claimed to be capital G-O-D? It doesn't. It in no way does. It's a text that shows others can be called God, than God. Even if God came against them. So how much more so then? The one he sent. Now, if you ask yourself another question, right? we just asked if he claimed to be God, capital G-O-D, how does this respond to that? It doesn't, right? Because it's a text where others are called gods, and he then says, if they're called gods, how can I not be properly called a god or theos, god? doesn't fit with God because the reference is to others who are called gods. Sons of God like him. So it's appropriate because they're sons like him who are called gods in a sense that is less than what he is called a god as in comparison. So every single one of these translations, all of them, all of their scholars, all of their learning, everything that went into it is wrong. John 10, 33, in every single one of these translations, is wrong. And it makes Jesus out to be someone who's not responding to the right accusation. You want to know why? Because Trinitarians believe he claimed to be God. And the impact of his response means nothing. Nothing to them except to show that there are others who are false who are called gods. How that helps respond to their accusation, they don't have an answer. There is none, right? Because that's what he's doing. Now, we're not using grammar, are we? Not one time, other than just pointing out that theos is used, right? One of the most common terms, God or a God. Anyone who says theos cannot be translated a God is either ignorant or a liar. And you should immediately stop talking to them. Okay? So once you are talking to an honest person who admits theos can be God or a God, you can proceed. If not, you have to stop talking to that person. You will make no progress. They're ignorant or a liar. All right. So if you're talking to a non-ignorant, non-lying person, and you want to go further and talk about John 1.1 1, 1 with no grammar, how can we do that similarly with what we just did with John 10 and the use of God in 33 and verse 33 and 34? We used the context, didn't we? We used the context to show and quite easily, right? All we had to do was read the next verse. Which is what Trinitarians often don't do. Or if they do, it doesn't change how they view the preceding verse. Look at the translations. Make yourself God, capital G-O-D. And then he quotes Psalm 82 in his defense. Where others are called gods. Right? It's not te is Jesus teaching polytheism? Well, if he is, that's something Trinitarians have to address, right? Because he's, what he's teaching is exactly what we're teaching. That the sons of God are gods, in a good and a bad sense. The good sense, they follow their father and they do what he says. In the bad sense, they don't, and they're judged for it. Psalm 82. The context clearly shows in John 10 that you should translate verse 33 as a God. Or, even if you translate it 
God, capital G-O-D. And one older Greek manuscript, I believe, does have the article. So you could say that that they the, that scribe viewed it as an accusation that he was claiming to be God, capital G-O-D. As I've stated in discussing John 10, that, that either one, it's his answer that tells you what he's doing. Even if they're accusing him of being God, right? Capital G-O-D. So what? His answer shows you, well, no, no, no. Even if that was the, I'm claiming what is like what he's describing them as, only I'm approved and they're not. Right? Otherwise, there'd be no sense in bringing up a text that calls other sons of God gods, where he's being accused of being theos. Right? It's either helping him out or it's not. He's the son of God. No one co more correctly quotes and applies these texts. And you see how obvious it is when you just read it like we are? It doesn't matter which translation we're using really, does it? It doesn't even matter if we translate verse 33 in John 10 as God, capital G-O-D context, proper understanding, Psalm 82 makes sense. We don't need anything else. It, it's not a mystery. These aren't really hard texts. It's not hard reading. But it's become hard. Let's go back to John 1, 1, the subject of our discussion this evening, to see if we can do what we just did in John 10 and use no Greek grammar other than, again, Maybe a reference to Theos or Lagos. Biblehub.com. John 1 1. Thank you all for joining me this evening. I appreciate it. So I'm trying to show how you can effectively use John 1 1 without involving any Greek grammar, any discussion of complicated technical issues other than maybe a word or two that are pretty common and you can explain easily, right? Theos, Lagos, is pretty much all you need to use, I think. We will get into the technical issues more beyond what I've done in writing in part 12 of my Bible in the Trinity and Conflict series, but not in this video. We're going to do now what John 1, 1, what we just did with John 10, involving the same key word, Theos, for the same subject. Jesus, right? Trinitarians don't believe that he was called, claimed to be God in John 10 in a, like Moses sense, as man. <laughs> they believe that's really referring to him in his divine godhood, the dual nature, the divine nature together with his human nature. So they apply that to his divine nature. And some might try to just apply it to his human nature, but so what? I mean, so... Either way, it's selective application. He doesn't make that qualification ever. And he quotes the text from Psalm 82 to show us what he's really talking about, right? Either way. So we did that with John 10. Same term, same subject. How can we do it with John 1, 1 when we have Trinitarians and others writing all this stuff, right? These articles and videos, you know, showing all these lines and diagrams and how you have the use of the word theos, right, God, or a God, in other verses of John 1.1 1, 1 without the article, and it's translated capital G-O-D, right? Just like we saw in John 10, right? No one has denied that theos can be translated capital G-O-D. That's a straw man, right? Unless someone that I don't know has argued that way. The John 1.1 1, 1 article thing is different. And I'm going to explain it all in about two weeks in part 12. We're not going to talk about the article tonight, though. I'm just referencing it for comparison discussion we'll have later. And things that come up in some of these videos and writings, right? It gets really deep and technical. And even in my writings, the issues can get technical. So how can we set all that aside? Just like we did kind of, right? They're different texts, but same word, same subject, right? They us, Jesus. We were able to set all that aside in John 10 and effectively show that the context 
really limits the meaning and translation to a God. Or even if it's, they accused him of being God, capital G-O-D, his meaning is clearly one of the sons of God gods, right? That's what he uses. That's his defense, which we accept and also use. All right, well, let's take a look at John 1, 1. We took a look at John 10, 33 first, right? We saw all of them said, you make yourself God, you claim to be God, capital G-O-D, all of them. I think there's one, or there's a couple out there that use a God there. I know the New English Bible at one time did or may still, but none of those we just read did. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, capital G-O-D. And the Word was God, capital G-O-D. All right, this isn't technical grammar stuff, right? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use very if I do that at all again, it's gonna be just basic stuff that almost everybody can use and process pretty effectively. More technical stuff will come later in part twelve, Bible in the Tree and Conflict series. So just look at it. English translation, one of the most common, right? In the beginning was the word, right? Logos. And the word was with God. Right, there's Theos again. Now that has what we call the article, but other than saying that, see part 12 for more of the significance. I'm just noting it real briefly. There is a difference, but I'm not going to get into the difference in this video. Let's just look at it in terms of capital G-O-D. Right? Just pretend you have someone else with you who has a, a question. They're using, say, the King James or any of these texts. And let's say you're, you're a non-Trinitarian or someone who uses, uses maybe the New World Translation or just believes Jesus is not a part of a trinity or um, in, in some other way identifiable with the God he's with. And before we talk about that further, let's just take a, a look at a couple others, right? New Living Translation. Some of these are more common than others. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, capital G-O-D, and the Word was God, capital G-O-D. New American Standard Bible, same thing, pretty much other than the first part. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, capital G-O-D. The Word was God, capital G-O-D. They're all basically saying the same thing. King James, New King James, same thing. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. How can we use this? How can we use this translation to effectively teach biblical theology and show that the Trinity is in error without going beyond these words, without involving or invoking any Greek grammatical argument other than just referencing a term like we've done, right? Theos or Lagos, because those are the key terms, right? The word is the subject. And the, the key term or description, right? what he's called, what he's described as, is theos. So you have to kind of know that term. That's not too much to ask anyone. Even if you know no Greek at all, you'll know if you should know a few terms. And that's okay. Right? People who talk about these texts will expect, if you know no Greek at all, at least you know the word theos. Right? God or a God. Sometimes divine. Although, as you can see here, not one of these translations at Bible Hub used divine. They were all God, capital G-O-D. There are a couple out there, right? Like Moffat, Goodspeed, that say the word was divine. But for the most part, you're going to see this. In John 1.1. 1, 1. And the word was God. And we know... New World Translation is one of the exceptions, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So, how can we effectively use these texts I'm going to explain just how you can do that. But before I do that, it's very important 
that you understand as a non-Trinitarian that when you're talking to a Trinitarian, when they see these words, they don't mean the same thing that you do. They mean something a lot different. They just don't tell you. So what do I mean by that? What are they not telling us? And how do I know? Well, I think all of us know when we talk to Trinitarians, right? And they start explaining what these terms mean. What do they usually say? Right? If you say, well, the words with God. So he can't be the God he's with, right? Trinitarians will say what? He's with the Father. And he's not the Father. Which we agree, right? Trinitarians and non-Trinitarians agree. Jesus and the Father are not the same. When Trinitarians see the term God, this is very important, okay? This is why I wanted to do a separate video just to focus on the text and these terms. And we're only talking about one term right now. God. And that's the term. The only term I want you to talk about. When John 1, 1, or John 10, but, you know, we're on John 1, 1. We already kind of went to John 10, but this would apply there too, a little bit differently. But overall, when you get to that text, it's the term you want to focus on is theos. Let me repeat that. I don't want you thinking of anything else. I don't want you thinking about the term father. Nothing else. They us. Okay? Because that's the term that's used. We know it, he's with the father, right? According to 1 John, according to John 17. But who's the father according to the biblical text? One God. The one God, the father. See, when we see God and realize it's the Father as non-Trinitarians, we just interpret it according to what the Bible calls the Father. God, the one God, only true God. Right? He's always called God, regardless of the qualifier in that way. Not a person of God. Remember, the explanation the Trinitarian or hypothetical gave, but that they usually do in real scenarios when this issue comes up. And you say, as the non-Trinitarian, just checking my mic, he's with God. He can't be the God he's with, right? Makes sense. They say, but he's with the Father. Why does that change anything? Right? We agree and we're like, sometimes we're caught, we're like, yeah, okay. Why did that change the original point you made? If your original point was he's with God, forget the article, just God. Don't know grammar right now, other than the term and basic just reading the text grammar, right? With God, he's with God. And he was Theos. In the beginning, with God, was Theos. Focus on Theos. Don't leave Theos. Why is it not good to leave and go to Father when the Trinitarian brings up Father to explain how he is with God? Because, as I just said a moment ago, when the Trinitarians use 
God for Father, they don't mean he's the one God, like 1 Corinthians 8, 6. They don't mean he's like God himself, separate from the word. They mean Father as a person of God, God being the Trinity or the nature of God, the usia, right? The divine Godhead nature that sometimes they portray as really a person, like a fourth person, really. They get into a fallacy there that we won't get into tonight. Simple video, right? Just this text. In the beginning was the Word. Word was with God. Why isn't the response that this text shows contextually like John 10, God, in the last part of this verse for the Word, can't be capital G-O-D? Why does pointing out that the word being with capital G-O-D precludes him from being capital G-O-D, not sustainable simply because the Trinitarians say he's with the Father. It is still sustainable. We just allow them to fake us out and use Father in a Trinitarian sense that you're not thinking about. And if you forget what I told you not to forget, the most important term in this text is that you must not forget Theos. He's with Theos. Yes, we realize that's the Father. It, probably, right? Based on other texts. It's with, with someone. He's with Theos, though. Doesn't matter which person this is it's god just like in galatians 3 20 god is one person he is one so we can't be both the mediator and a party to the contract like we talked about in part one of the bible in the trinity and conflict series he's with god everyone no grammar none Go back to step one and never get off it because you do not have to. And the reason why this discussion gets off when it doesn't have to is because everyone is focused on this part. We are. And because this part has been the most significant part, right? A lot has been happening with it. There have been multiple grammatical rules associated with it. This is not the key. It's explainable, and in part 12, you will see, as I've shown elsewhere, it's actually pretty clear as well. But remember, theos can mean what? God or a god, right? Divine as well, but it's not important right now. It's important to Trinitarians, though. I'll explain in a moment. But for now, theos basically means God or a god, right? So, that part is the most open to question. Because while we're not going to talk about the article, the Greek article in this video, in part 12 I will, it is used with theos here, which makes it pretty much impossible for this to mean a God. You understand where I'm going with this? Here you have multiple possibilities. And while we do believe one is better than the others, here your possibilities are fewer. That is so important because that means you never have to get into proving the grammar of this part. This part does it for you. Just like John 10, 34 does it for you in John 10, 33. Exactly like it, only with different means, right? There it's a quotation. Here it's a situation, namely the context in which the word is described as theos, while he's with another theos. 
Does it say another? Well, it doesn't have to, does it? He's with the God. And he is theos. So you can't sensibly be with God and not be separate from him. Unless you're a Trinitarian, right? And this is why you must not get off theos. I am urging you, short of commanding you, not to stop talking about theos in this text, ever. You can allow Father to come up as the likely further description of who the Word is with, right? 1 John 1, 1, John 17, fine. If you allow Theos to leave your discussion or the, the, the key focus of what you're talking about relative to the Father, you're off. Hey, you're, you're, you're now in the Trinitarian realm and you will never get back to where you need to be and that is grammar free, right? Everybody can use this text. This part specifically, the word was with God. It repeats it in verse 2, but we're going to stay right here. Same thing. Right? Don't even get into this. You don't have to. He can't be the God he's with. He can't be. Trinitarians try to get out of that before you're, you're even able to really do what I just did. By bringing up the Father. They need the Father to be that God he's with and you not to maintain the Father being Theos. Because he can't be with another Theos, right? That's the whole point of Trinitarianism. That he's not a separate Theos, excuse me. But they're all persons of the one Theos. The one Theos. Remember, everybody, Trinitarians believe in one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They share the essence, the usia, that they call Godhead or the God nature. And that's why when Trinitarians read capital G-O-D here, they can either see it like they used to often, more often with Caldwell, as definite you know, identification of Jesus as God. But the more... Astute Trinitarians realized that was a contradiction. <laughs> kind of like what I'm talking about. This is very important. And I'll get into the Caldwell world stuff later. Don't worry. Don't get distracted. I'm just pointing out that there was a time Trinitarians viewed this capital G-O-D translation differently. That I'll talk about more in part 12. But, but now when they use capital G-O-D, really what they want to see is divine. That's, that's how they interpret it, really, right? Because the word can't be the Trinity, right? If, if there's one God and the word is God, well, they don't believe the word is the Trinity. They believe the word is the second person of the Trinity. Something the Bible never says, right? The words person of God other than referring to the person of God, the one person of God, that doesn't occur in the Bible. It never refers to the Son as the person of God or the Father as a person of God with the idea that there are other persons. Never. That's a later Trinitarian concept. But that's what they're doing. You understand why now you can use this text effectively? Forget about this last part at the start. Just say, okay, Let's just use your Bible and accept that reading, capital G-O-D. Just like in John 10. Maybe you already talked about it or you'll go to it next. Say, well, there's another text. Same thing. Let's just accept capital G-O-D and use the context. All right, we talked about how you can use the context of John 10, 33. Very next verse, 34. And you can prove without any grammar at all. It's either he's, they're accusing him to be capital G-O-D and wrong or they're accusing him to be a God, correct in that regard, and in rejecting him wrong, and then he proves that by quoting Psalm 82. Here, 
You can use the context in the same way. You can use other parts of the extending context that we'll get into later. You don't need to. John 1.1, 1, 1, stay there and stay with the us. Both times, right? It's most important in terms of this video and in terms of talking about John 1.1 1, 1 without any grammar at all. Just checking my mic. It's one of those things I've had come up. <laughs> that you understand this first reference to theos with or without the article that we know it has the article there in the first one that is significant you don't need to bring it up really you don't because if you can't get them to recognize that the word is with like in association with god it won't matter what else you talk about they're already on the trinitarian assumption Right? He's with a person of God, Trinity. Right? doesn't matter. Right? He's with the Father. Father's not a separate God to them. He's not the one God to them. They'll call him the one God, but never exclude the others as being part of the one God. Right? So that's why the word can't be identified as the God he's with. Not in the sense that he's the Father in the Trinitarian's view. Right? They can't have him be identified as the Father. And that's what they identify the first God as. The theos with the article is with God. The Trinitarians are seeing person, first person of God. And in this second instance, they're seeing what? Second person of God. One God, right? And multiple persons sharing this essence. Best analogy is a three-headed person, right? One person, one head, separate human being from another person, one head. But just for analogy, if you had one human being and three separate heads, that's kind of what we're talking about, right? It's not perfect, but it's close because they're sharing one being, one nature. And they're three different persons, consciously. So that's kind of what the Trinitarians believe, only in a divine sense, right? That the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit share that essence of divinity co-equally. There's no division. Right, like a three-headed person. See, there's no division there. Not in the nature of the body they share. Whereas with me and another person, there's a separation, right? There's two persons, two people. Two persons and two people. Same thing. There's no distinction between the person and the the person as a as a people person, right? <laughs> a being. Some Trinitarians use person as if it's not a separate being. Like that three-headed person I just used as an analogy. That's what they're thinking about when they see these kinds of texts. Because they believe in the Trinity. And these are two of those persons. They're word substituting. And, and conceptually as well. right? They'll use the word Father, but it's the concept they attach to it. You believe in the Father, right? You might even believe he's with the Father. They believe it differently, though. See, you believe he's with the Father, the God who is the Father, who's a separate, you know, the separate one God. And then the other sons of God who perfectly represent him are also gods, but they're just not their own separate God doing their own will, right? They're representing him. They're reflecting him. So essentially, there's only one God in the sense that they're all representing his will and doing what he says. So they don't believe that, though. They believe, so like with, with an angel, See, they believe an angel is a spirit, but it's separate from the Father. It's not sharing your typical angel. I'm not talking about the angel of the Lord and the one they kind of think is the second person of the Trinity. Or Satan. This is a separate being. Spiritually separate from the Father. They don't believe that with Jesus or the Son and the Holy Spirit. They believe they all three, those three only, no other spirit, share this metaphysical divinity without a separation. So the term God to a Trinitarian, don't forget this, and this is why I focus on theos, the term's actually used, right? We're talking about father and son, but I'm doing that to show you what they mean, what they're seeing and while you have such a hard time at times, you start pointing out, well, he's with God. How can he be the God he's with? It has to be a separate God, a God like the sons of God, John 10. Consistent with biblical theology, right? We get it. Jesus gets it. 
He taught it. We accept. When, when they see John 1, 1, that's not what they're, they're seeing. They're seeing, when they see theos, one of two things most of the time, or, or if not exclusively. When they see theos, whether it's in the last part or in the, the second part or the first time theos is used for the God the Word is with, either one. It doesn't matter where the word is relative to the verb or whether it has the article. None of it matters. <laughs> they'll tell you it matters, but then, then when you talk to them, it, you, you realize it doesn't, right? The only way it might matter to them is if they see this more as a specific reference to the Trinity. But it, they don't they, because the association involved with being with. And so... Even here with the article, Theos is viewed most often as the Father, right? A person of God, of Theos. That's totally different than the words used in this text, right? See, they're importing this later idea of a person sharing the essence of God, right? God to them can also mean the Trinity, or at least the divine Godhead that they share. These are all uses of God, theos, nowhere taught in these texts or any other biblical text. None of them teach theos means the Trinity or a person of the Trinity. None of them. That's later, hundreds of years stuff later. But it doesn't matter. Trinitarians bring it back to this text anyway. And if you don't call them on it, if you're not alert to stop the discussion and say, wait a minute, you're saying that when the word is with God, that means he's with the Father? Yeah. And you see Father as a person of the Trinity? Yeah. The text doesn't say that. But that's what it means. Well, can we just stick with what the text says? Right? And they'll either say no, in which case you got to go, right? If you can't talk about the text, we're done. What happened in John 10? Jesus quoted the text, done. If they're not going to allow you to deal with the text, we're done. Why are you even wasting your time, right? Okay, so they say, yeah, okay, fine, let's just deal with the text, but I'm going to explain to you what it means. Okay, fine. It uses the term theos. What does theos mean to you, Trinitarian? Well, it means, in this case, the Father. And so it means that the words with the Father, God the Father, God the Father, person of the Trinity, yeah. And then when it says the word was theos, what does that mean? Well, it means that the word is fully divine like the Father. Qualitative. He's divine. Doesn't mean he's a separate God. Hmm. Well, if you're divine... Don't you have the nature of a God or of God? Yeah. Okay. So divine could mean a God or God. Or it could mean, if you're a Trinitarian, person of God. And that's what you need to understand. It doesn't matter whether it's G-O-D, capital G, or divine, capital D or lowercase d. They are going to see and argue with you continuously that the terms theos here are used for persons of theos. So if the word is actually with what the text says, theos, the word cannot be the same theos. That's not only obvious based on its face, right? But it's the whole reason Trinitarians identify the first theos as the Father in the first place. They can't have the Word being the one He's with, whom they interpret as what or whom? The Father. 
right? So he can't be the Father because they're separate persons within God. But that's not what it says. Right? And if you don't disallow a Trinitarian from reading the Trinity into the text, you have to say, wait a minute. We're trying to figure out if the text teaches the Trinity, not whether you can interpret it according to the Trinity. Right? We know we can substitute terms for meanings or concepts. We're just using the terms in the text, though, and how they're explained in the text or in the surrounding context and other related texts. The terms in the text are not at all consistent with the Trinity. And the terms in the text show Jesus as the Word, like Jesus in John 10. In John 1, 1, he can't be the God he's with. And in John 10... He's not defending himself claiming to be God, capital G-O-D, by using a text that calls other sons of God, God's lowercase G-O-D, yes. I know it may seem simple, but if so, I would like to see you use this principle. I believe if you actually do what I'm saying, and force Trinitarians to use the terms in the text of any translation, the Word was with God. Who is that, Trinitarians? The Father. It doesn't say that. Well, don't you agree with that it's the Father? Yeah. But I believe the Father is the one God, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. You believe he's a person of God, of the one God. And he's one of the three persons. That's not what this text says. So, the very basis a Trinitarian uses to distinguish the Word from the Father in this text is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to do what I've done this whole evening and avoid any discussion of Greek grammar and just embrace any translation of this text. You want to know why? Because... The second clause, the word was with God, they all get it right. They just interpret it wrong. It is talking about the word being with God, the Father, the one God, as a son of God, just like the other sons of God. Trinitarians don't believe that. They believe he's with the Father. And that God in this first or second part, where it first uses theos, doesn't mean theos in terms of God, capital G or D, or a God. It means person of. A person with that nature. Just like they believe in the last part, right? It, it really doesn't matter. Like we'll talk further about in part 12 of the Bible and the Trinian Conflict. And like I've talked about in my writings elsewhere, it doesn't matter. Whenever a Trinitarian sees the word theos with the article, without the article, before the verb, after the verb, whenever, however, a Trinitarian sees the word God applied to to Jesus, or the Father, or the Holy Spirit? That's not what they mean. They mean person of God. Something that's nowhere explained in any of these texts. So your challenge is to disallow. First draw it out. What do you mean he's with the Father? Father, you mean his person of God? No, I mean Father is the one God. He's with the one God, as a son of God. Like the other sons of God, who are gods, John 10. And this says he's with God, not the Father. And even though I believe that God is the Father, not in a Trinitarian sense, right? It's totally different to say that's the one God that's elsewhere referred to as the Father, or as one person, right? Galatians 3.20. Than to say person of God, right? That changes everything. Right? That creates the Trinitarian metaphysic. 
but it's not in the text. They're importing it into not just this last part I have highlighted for you. Every use of God. It's just here it's more significant because the word being called theos, which they interpret as person of God, is with theos. Someone else, right? Another God, right? They always say, well, why doesn't it use another? It doesn't have to. He's with a God he cannot be. It's just you who believe in the Trinity displace the term theos from the text and put in father next and then claim the same thing we're claiming only we use the text. You claim after your substitution of terms and concepts that the word can't be the father that he's with. We don't do any of that. We agree the word is not the one he's with we just believe, unlike Trinitarians, that the Word is with the God who is the Father. And so he can't be that same God. True, he can't be the Father. We agree with that. But the Trinitarians will confuse you into thinking, ah, see, that's what we don't, we don't believe he's the Father. The difference is, to us, the Father is God. Himself. Not with anyone else. And we also believe the Son is God. By Himself, not with anyone else. When He represents the Father as a Son of God, who is a God, just like the other sons are gods, according to His Father and Himself, in responding to the Jews who accused him of blasphemy when all he was claiming was what more rightly belonged to himself than to the others who were also rightly called gods, even though they were judged adversely as gods, he was not. He was one of the sons of God who was with God in the beginning. When God said in the beginning, let us make man in our image. And according to Job 38, 7, all the sons of God were there when that happened. Just like the wisdom of God was there with God making all these things happen. But he's not sharing a divine essence. He's not a person of God with the Father. That's not taught in John 1, 1. That's not taught in any text. We teach the text. Don't forget it. Do not allow substitution of terms or concept. Bring up any translation. It doesn't matter. The word was with God. Fine, God's the Father there. He's not that God. He's the Son of God who is a God like the other sons of God, John 10. And just like John 10, in talking about this verse, we didn't need to explain anything using anything more than just a couple terms, no real grammar at all. Because it's not about that. It's about how the Trinitarians ruin it all by changing the terms from what are used in the text to their concepts that came about next and that actually contradict what is used in the text to express proper meaning, right? In the beginning was the word, the Logos. And the Logos was with God. And the Logos was Theos, was a God. Just like he explains and defends in John 10, when the Jews wrongly accused him of blasphemy. So all of these texts fit together. We don't need the Trinity. We don't need extended grammar and deep knowledge of all these technical issues. To discuss John 1 1, it's a beautiful text. It's one you can use in any translation. If you focus on the key terms in the right sequence, find out what they're thinking, draw them out. Oh, you mean he's with the Father there as that God? And so you don't think there's a problem with the Trinity because the word's with the Father? Don't you mean the Father as a person of God? But it says he's with God. So there's no Father of mentioned there. And even if that is the Father, the God he's with, he's God there. So he can't be the God he's with. 
And if a Trinitarian can't go there with you, if a Trinitarian can't stay in the text and recognize what to do next, then that's what you have when you have to be the one to wish them well, to be on your way, and to pick another time and day to engage people using any translation, any version, any language of John 1.1 1, 1, and properly discuss it so that you can teach what the text says without having to get too far off into anything too technical or deep. If you focus on the right parts of the text and what the next part would then have to mean in context. Because I do believe we've gotten too far off the basic words that are used and allowed for Trinitarians and others to substitute terms like theos with person of God, Father as the person of God. And it's allowed us, or it's kept us, I should say, from being effective when explaining these texts according to the way that they were written.